This week we went somewhere on the Sunshine Coast where neither of us had been before. We visited the little historic town of Yandina. We've both passed through Yandina before but never stopped to have a look around. It is home to one of Queensland's oldest pubs and railway stations. You can also find some funky cafes, restaurants and some gorgeous shops in the small main street area. In Yandina you will also find, as one reviewer says, the finest restaurant in the world. They are, of course, talking about the well-loved Spirit House. After we filled up at one of the popular cafes, we headed to the famous Ginger Factory. It is one of the most visited attractions on the Sunshine Coast. We wander around, find the Gruffalo, sit under a thousand rainbow umbrellas and tell you all about the gardens, Morton, the original steam train, the indoor boat ride, plus heaps more. Unfortunately, we weren't hungry, so we didn't enjoy a ginger scone or ginger ice cream, but maybe next time. Lastly, we drive 15 minutes to the popular beachside town of Coolum Beach. Coolum has the longest, flattest, widest beach on the Sunshine Coast and is very popular for surfing. It is unspoiled and the place to go if you want a relaxing beachside holiday without all the distractions. We give you all the info from our vantage spot on the balcony of the Coolum Beach Surf Club. Yep, it's a tough life, but someone has to do it. Stay listening to the end to hear what birthday present I bought for Lyle at Coolum. And then the popular mountain that the locals love to climb, but is actually the second biggest rock in the world after Uluru. If you would like to see the pictures I took while out and about recording this podcast, then click on the episode 91 in the description on the podcast player you are listening on now. Please enjoy episode 91. Well, we are sitting in one of the prettiest places um, I've seen today. (laughs) Uh, and to, and we are in the hinterland again, I guess almost, aren't sure. we? Sure, yep, the, the yep. Sunshine Coast. And as I said in the intro, we are taking you to um, Yandina and all the spots around there and then to Coolum Beach. But we, we left at home this morning and drove maybe 30 minutes up the highway to the little town of Yandina, right? Yep. And um, to be honest, we were just like, just going to call in because Lyle says, oh, it's the oldest pub in Queensland, let's call in there. And then we found the old railway station and then we found the old, uh, like a beautiful cafe and then we walked up the main street and then we've ended up in, at the ginger factory. So we've got a lot, lot to sort of um, tell people about there, haven't we, Lyle? Yeah, um, the old pub, uh, which is where we first uh, stopped and had a look, at, that was built in 1891. Yeah, and there's pictures of it that, that shows... Um, uh, shows when the original building too. Yeah, and, and the, basically the the facade is pretty much still the same. Obviously, there's been extensions and that sort of thing. But the funny thing about that particular pub is when they built it, they built it on the wrong spot. Right. So How far away, though? It's not far, but, okay. the, but they had to load the old building onto a, a bullock tray yeah. and um, then uh, take it to its correct spot. Yeah. But as Lance said, it's, uh, it's the uh, oldest pub uh, on the Sunshine Coast and it was built originally to uh, support uh, as a, um, a stop on the way to the Gympie Goldfields. Okay and so the train station was set up for that is that what yeah. you're saying and, yeah. and so the pub obviously the yeah you know. and the watering hole for the for the for the gold fields on the way you know halfway i yeah. suppose okay um, the little train station right next to the pub is it's almost a bit run down now but we've got some photos of that that as well like the show Lyle sitting on the bench waiting for the train i think they're just doing some renovations but it it said something about being built in 1891 as well as well yeah and it yeah. looks like it was built in 1891 so <laughs> Um, but but um, what a cute little town Yandina is. They're yeah, the cute. town itself is. Uh, they've they've kept all the facade of all the old shops and and that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, you know, Federation style, which we've talked about before. Uh, look, it is. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, and I, you know, to be honest, I I think there's a bit of money around because of, you know most of the shops are either fashion shops or the or, beautiful fashion shops yeah. like boutiques. You know, like there's one called the Dollhouse. There's one called the Girls from Imp- what's it, how, how do you say that? Epanema. Yeah. Um. Actually, I don't think that's close. There's Epanema. A yeah, that's it. Um, okay. And there's fashions in that. But here's a hint though. Don't come on a Monday because a lot of these shops are shut on Monday. I guess because they open all weekend for that weekend trade. Uh, but they've done up all the shop fronts. It's it's a beautiful little main street, and you've got everything there from the as I was saying those upmarket sort of fashion shops. There's the crafty shops. There's a beautiful sort of wooden painting, framing, art supply shop. 
and I think there's probably two or three buildings in the main street that were having significant work done on them. Yeah, and Converted for sure. into, you know, other cafes or other shops. Yeah, one of them I think was Yamundi Cafe. I mean, no, Yamundi Coffee. Yandina. Was it? Yandina Coffee, I think. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, maybe. We did read something on the shop. You could be correct. That'd be a first, but anyway. Well, you can either be... You heard that first boy. here on the Beach Travel Wine podcast. Boys, a little bit of advice oh, here we for go. all you men out there. You can either be right or happy. Yeah, and on so, both. So, so yeah, work? Lynn thinks she's both. <laughs> anyway, so, so back to Yandina. Um, and there's like the, the one sort of street we walked up was called Stephen Street. Correct. And then that, that hits the old Bruce, um, Bruce Highway. Highway. And there, look, you've got your farmer's market shops, you know, your organic fruit and vegetables. There's lots of, there's a beautiful looking butcher. I mean, I don't know about the butcher himself, but, you know, the butcher shop. Yeah, and there's, there's a cafe, the, uh, the, not the cafe, the bakery. The bakery, the post office, there's vet supplies, uh, medical centre. So there's a lot more here than I thought there, there was. But it's, it is a beautiful little, it's not big, obviously, two blocks and, and, and you're done. Yeah. But, um yeah so that it's worth coming to have a look at the pub because inside we didn't mention that they've completely renovated that oh look it's really well done yeah. really really well done so they've kept the old facade out the front the bar itself the main bar itself you, you know you, you'd sort of look at that and say yeah that's from that era but everything else is actually very, very modern. Yeah, and, and it's a big uh, restaurant area. And yeah, I reckon that it's probably see courtyard uh, area, maybe two fifty. Yeah, it's in great. The, in the actual bistro I'll bar some, area, I'll put some photos of the pub itself and the main street as well. Uh, in this is uh, episode ninety one. Really? Yeah, uh, we're on our way to a hundred. Uh, so yeah, at Yandina and uh, Coolum Beach, which we're going to talk about in a little while. Now, we parked the car, as we said, and we got some photos of the pub and checked it out and walked up the street and checked out, you know, those, there's some nice, like a nice Thai restaurant and a nice, was it a Belgian restaurant? It said open three nights a week, had a nice outdoor area. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On the weekends. But then, you know, I said we're going to have a coffee and I looked across and there's this big old building. It sort of painted, a, I guess, a bright watermelon red colour. Mm. And it looked pretty funky, had some benches out the front and some umbrellas. And so we thought, oh, well, we'll go across and, and have a, a coffee. We didn't actually end up having a coffee. We should have, though, because they make their own coffee there. Yeah. But we walked inside and it's like, it's like a big old shed. Not like it is. It's a big old shed with a couple of different levels. You go up an old ramp and it's still got the old sort of um, floorboards and it's got little tables everywhere with a mix of every different type of chair you can imagine. And plants and timber frames hanging from the ceiling fairy lights and you can see the roof it's what you know they've got all the eaves out you know not the eaves the the, the joist bearers whatever they call those things in the roof there's no ceiling in it and it's a it's a beautiful cafe yeah and no, i actually asked the the guy that was looking after us uh, what it was originally and it used to be a storage area for railway sleepers because it's actually literally right across the road from the railway station yeah and uh what, what did you say the name of it was that's a very good question um it's called the um the gun gun cotton got yeah gun cotton cafe that's correct yeah, yeah. And, and i've got to say the was food so was so yeah, good i tell you go and check out the pictures i took because I had these beautiful yeah, anyway go and have a look it was really really nice so so and rather than have the coffee we had a uh, a, tropical juice. a tropical juice and that was as good as it, was it gets like pure pineapple and passion fruit wasn't it yeah it was, it was really, beautiful just and so and unique in little rooms you know like there's people there's quite a few people in there but somewhere behind the you know the piano bar and there's a little area for kids to play and i said to lyle oh i wonder what the wine list is like because they're open for lunch and uh breakfast, breakfast and lunch, and lunch seven yeah. days so open to two o'clock although they are they do sometimes do special functions at yeah night, they're doing one for valentine's, valentine's day, day right and you know they they actually had um, quite a nice wine list. Yeah, it was it was on, it wasn't a big wine list, but it was uh, it was really good. And one of the ones we saw was um, the fish bone chardonnay, chardonnay, which we which is in uh, Margaret River in WA, and. Uh, we just we, happened to go to the fish we bone. Had, we happened and had to, a chardonnay. <laughs> yeah, we did have the chardonnay oh, yeah. at the fish bone restaurant and the fishbone restaurant is a japanese yeah, restaurant it was lovely food. And, and it was fabulous but you know what we um it wasn't 10 o'clock in the morning we probably would have had a glass of wine but we didn't <laughs> yeah 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 probably but i i just i was blown away by it's it's certainly worth a visit if you want to go to the pub for lunch or dinner try out some of the other restaurants in the main street even do a bit of shopping or you know hit, hit the cafes up you know because they at at the cafe we we're just talking about they they uh, roast 
a lot of their own coffee, you know, and they do different blends, you know. So, you know, they've got, a, you know, like a menu, a coffee menu on the on Yeah, the so they specialise in, in, and they roast their beans yeah. on site. Yeah. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, I, it was definitely worth a visit. The town itself, Leanne said to me when we were walking around, she said, it's a little bit alternative, but it's still really, you know, it's quite, it's quite modern as well. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it um, has a real real mix and, you know, it's certainly becoming a lot more upmarket than, than I imagine what it was with just the shop fronts you, you can see, you know, like they're, they're making it look very appealing to walk down the street and go into their shops, that's for sure. Well, yeah. one of the other things that um, the Andina is um, probably famous for is they've got a restaurant called the Spirit House. Oh, and, yes. And uh, that is... Um, Australia wide known. Um, it well, you is, said you saw a review that said it's the best restaurant that this, these people have been in in the world. <laughs> in the world, yeah. yeah. And it's it's Asian style, and that was uh, originally uh, the people. It was an old cattle property, and what they did, the people that uh, bought it, um, first of all, they put in some hydroponic pools or ponds, mm. and then they set about to. Uh, plant very exotic trees and plants and that sort of thing. So they made it a garden that people want to go and visit. Yeah, and, and so now that garden is just absolutely amazing. And why haven't you taken me here? Well, I was just thinking that. Well, actually, uh, I've tried to book in, but they're booked out so so. You are going to take advanced. me there for my birthday. Yeah, but I yeah. couldn't get in. And, yeah. and they had some renovations. They were closed for quite a while. So yeah, but up. they, um, so what, what they did is, yeah, so in 1990, they bought the property. They, they For a couple of years, they looked after the garden and I think it was in 1995 they actually opened the restaurant mm. and the restaurant and, and a little bit a little while later they put in a, a cooking school which is you know basically Australia wide mm. uh, recognised as one of the best cooking schools yeah, uh, for Asian food. Um, I'll put a link to the uh, the Spirit House and I'll put a link to the car, the, cof the coffee shop that we went to and yeah. um, also the, uh, the Yandina hotel yeah yep. so people can go and check those out you know if, if they if they'd like to have a look yeah sure right so just up the road from the main sort of little township of yandina wouldn't even be a kilometer probably is one of the big attractions on the sunshine coast that people even drive from brisbane from to come and see and that is the ginger factory yeah which is actually where we're sitting right now in the rain rainbrella project so honestly Go and see the photos, um, beachtravelwine.com, and it's episode 91 because it's just really pretty and you can hear all the parrots in the background. And we just decided we'd sit here and, and tell you all about this, you know, and Dina and the, and the ginger factory while we're here. So the entrance to the ginger factory is free, right? Correct, yeah. But there are a couple of things that if you pay, I think between, I think between 10 and $13, you can go on um, the old original uh, ginger train, which is called Morton. Yep. yep. Is that steam? Very good question, Lyle. Okay, yes. shouldn't have asked it then. Uh, <laughs> not knowing the answer. Well, I don't think it is now, but it may probably once was, right? Yeah. And so they've got like a little train station. It's called the Ginger Platform, I think, that you pull up. And uh, it just takes you on a really slow ride all the way around the, um, it sort of circumnavigates the Ginger Factory and you get a commentary as you go. Because yeah, well, it's basically a rainforest. Yes, but it used to be a ginger farm. But they used Correct, to actually yeah. grow all the ginger here. Well, it was well. It is still brought, no. It still is a ginger factory. What happened was, but was, they don't grow it all here. They they import it and they they buy it in. Sure, but yeah. it's 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 done here. And it's it was called Budrum here. Ginger. Well, a re there was two factories. There was the Budrum factory and there was the Andina factory. Right. Now, what they did is in about the nineteen. Uh, 1980, early 1980s, they decided that they were going to close the Butterham factory right, and bring all the plant from that factory down to here. And that Oh, fine, can you hear that? There yeah. goes Morton. Toot, toot. I'd say that was steam. <laughs> but then, but I, I don't know. Pardon me. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, wind anyway. Yeah, wind. Anyway, yeah, some sort of energy. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, so they, they bought all the gear um, back from Butterham to Yandina mm -hmm. and then... Here comes Morton, just as we're sitting here. There we go. And that was com <laughs> and that was all completed. The, the transfer was all completed in 1989. The, the train away. There we go. Sorry. To and what's really nice about the train is it's got these really lovely old seats and it's safe for kids because it goes that slow. It's, yeah, it's just lovely and it does wind all the way through the through the rainforest. And I've, a few of my grandkids have 
come to the ginger factory and you ask them what they remember about the ginger factory and it's always the train ride they just love it you know which is which is nice as well as the train ride though there is a ride called um overboard overboard thank you and it's in indoors and you hop in a, a little boat uh i think it's got two or three seats and you just move very slowly um through channel and it's like around the world sort of experience so they've got displays or little um little uh what would you call like figurines figurines paper mache all sorts of stuff in the you know setting up so there's um, a france one with the moulin rouge there's uh hawaii there's mexico one you know so there's lots of different countries they go around the world basically and it's really impressive and uh the kids really enjoy that that as well that that little boat ride i was actually thought it was better than i thought it was going to be to be honest so I, I i did enjoy that um but what you can do for free though is well they've got it as you come in there's a, a shop full of all sorts of ginger products obviously and and souvenirs as well and there's a cafe yep and it's it's <laughs> shush morton um it's outdoor cafe and there is a bit of a bar area there too because we've had an alcoholic ginger beer there before. We have. <laughs> They've got several flavours of alcohol, uh, ginger beer, But alcohol. the cafe, I mean, obviously they've got a whole range of food, but one of my favourites is the ginger scones that they have there. They're really nice. Yes, I, I and, do remember you having them and also the ginger ice cream. Yes, well, that was, someone recommended me that this morning. So now that's sitting over there right next to uh, a big playground. And the playground's broken into two areas, is, and they're both they're all both closed off. And one is for like little tots, that, so it's safe in there. And then the, the one next door is, is a bit bigger, so they can climb up the, the stairs and ladders and things. And so your kids can actually play it in an enclosed area while you sit and enjoy your um, cup of coffee with your ginger scone. So that's pretty cool. And then, or depending on what time it is, ginger correct. beer. Correct. <laughs> and then you cross over a little bridge, and there's a, a, a stunning lake with a fountain coming out of it you quite often see turtles and mostly lizards and but all because it's called the ginger factory you know because of how it started but all around the gardens are the um, ornamental gingers you know where I'm sitting here now I can just see the beautiful flowers of the gingers they've even got like a little nursery area now called the potting house I think it's called yeah um, where you can buy these exotic gingers as well so you know the, the gardens are just just stunning and so, and there's a couple of sh shops with, um, you know, like, I guess, giftware, you'd say? Yeah, yeah. giftware mainly. Yeah. And they've got some, uh, also some, uh, you know, the um, essential oils and, and all that sort of, sort of gear, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then, then there's the, uh, which we just walked through then, uh, what they call the Rainforest Walk. And in school holidays, they have it set up where, we, well, maybe maybe out of school holidays as well, they have like little signs and it's called the Gruffalo Walk and they have uh, little signs to say, can you find the mouse? And they've got like a little mouse tail and a little little path you follow around and you eventually find the Gruffalo and go and check the pictures out. I've got a picture with the Gruffalo, hello. And um, and the Gruffalo's house. So, you know, it's a, it's a nice area for kids to play and you don't need to pay to go and see that. And it's, it's a bit of fun, right? Yeah, look, it's it is fantastic for kids. Yes, There's, it's definitely for kids, and it is really good for kids. So. I'm looking across here in in the garden, and I can see even more gingers. See the flowers sort of poking up from the ground through there. The ginger flowers, well, the, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I can see them. There's yep. a yellow one, and then on this side, there's an orange one. So you're just surrounded by lush gardens, tropical rainforest, and then these gingers. And we're in the Rainbrella um, project, um, and it's to represent hope and all the good stuff that you know you, you you want for the world. And it was done by a local artist called Sophie Blake. And I don't know how I should have read the sign, but there's literally hundreds and hundreds of rainbow umbrellas. Yeah, this that, is new from when I've been okay, here. That covers like a whole walkway. The walkway would be probably a hundred meters or more, and the, the umbrellas are four, five, six wide, and you look up, and that's all you can see. And through the gaps, you can see the rainforest, and it's it is just stunning, isn't it? Yeah, and Yandina is probably about 120 k from Brisbane, and so it's not that far. Mm. Um, the uh, I suppose it'd be 20 minutes from the Sunshine Coast Airport for those people that um, are coming from interstate. You'd fly into the Maroochee. Yeah. Sun, Maroochydore Sunshine Coast Airport. Uh, again, like most of um, the Sunshine Coast, 
very limited public transport. Um, so, um, but lots of parking. There is lots of parking, mm. but yeah, okay. I think if you came from interstate, you definitely want to get, uh, yeah, get a car. hire a car. But you you could have a day in Yandina, you know, by walking around the main street in Yand where we were, the little town. Yes. Yeah. And then you could spend some time at the ginger factory. And, or or and you, go you could, if you book early enough you go to the spirit house for lunch hello sure or do a sure. cooking lesson and then right across the road from here the ginger factory is the macadamia nutworks nutworks place. yeah and um my neighbor this morning said you should go there they've got every sort of macadamia product you could want and i'm like i just like plain old macadamia so yeah, yeah. Um, and that that literally is, is across the road so chocolate coated macadamia macadamia oil the, the whole kit and caboodle is, is across the road there um i'm not sure that i finished the ginger factory though so we did talk about the overboard um there's also they do some um demonstrations here uh they talk to you they've got a lot of bees and, correct they do and, a beekeeping show yeah right so and that's um very popular as well and they've got some lovely murals on the walls and at, at times they even have like a kids jumping castle. I know that I've come with my little kids and there's a little area where they can just go and play in that. And there's a there's an area that you can book for birthday parties and it's it's next to the um, the boat ride and it's got like a big ball pit full of those little balls and it's got um, like, a, a, once again, it's an enclosed area, little cubby house. So it's a nice to get away from the busy area. There's another little place you can go and get out of the, the sun and, and let the kids play. And it's quite, yeah, it's, it's really quite nice in there as well. So lots and lots to see and do here, yeah? And as I said, it's free, yeah? Yeah, it's free and, you know, and because it's, you know, obviously subtropical climate, everything grows and grows and grows oh it's just stunning yeah yeah. I, yeah you you could just come over you know if you didn't want to go to the andina coffee shop you could just come here and have morning tea just grab an ice cream you know it's just wonderful we've just driven probably 15 minutes from the ginger factory where we were at yandina yeah. and we're now at the beautiful beachside little uh town of coolum coolum beach yes yes and um yeah we're going to walk along the pathway and you know chat but it's 33 degrees in the shade so we you know we've actually found a spot sitting on the um balcony of <laughs> the Coolum surf club enjoying a nice cold drink uh as we're chatting yeah and one of the things we uh we couldn't we couldn't believe when we arrived was uh how busy the car park was being on a monday out of school uh, holidays second week out of school holidays after the christmas holidays and when we worked in this to the surf club we now know why, because it is so busy. And the, the, the Coolum Surf Club has always had fabulous reputation for food. I mean, you know, probably for the 20 years I've known about it, but it obviously still has because it was so busy. But And yeah. it's also got fantastic views, like a lot of the surf clubs on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, you're uh, basically sitting on top of the beach. You are, you know, so we... And this is a Coolum Beach. Um, have you got any details on sure, the, the sure, beach there? Yeah. So, so or Coolum the town, Beach, actually. Yeah, Coolum Beach uh, I just said to Leon as we were driving in, you know, many years ago when I first moved to the Sunshine Coast, I often thought about I'd love to retire here because it is just the most beautiful beach. And uh, Well, it's long yeah, and it's, flat. Well, it's actually, it's actually uh, from the southern end, which is where we're sitting now, it's 15 kilometres all the way, and you go past Perigian to Sunrise Beach. So okay. It's 15 kilometres of un 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 op uh, what is the word? uninterrupted. Uninterrupted, that's the word I was looking for, beach. And it's, it's a very wide beach. You're talking about probably 100 metres of beautiful white sand. Yeah. And, uh, and it, is, it is known for its surf. Uh, there's, there's always surf lessons going on all the time. Um, but yeah, so and just past, uh, you've got Sunrise Beach. You've got Sunshine Beach, which yeah. is, I think, nearly one of the most expensive suburbs on the Sunshine Coast. So that's a really nice area as well. Hello, hello. Um, that's someone here looking at us. How we, are you? We do. We've got someone looking through the mirror. Um, um, another glass. window looker. But also, um, also, Lyle, um, right next door to the surf club. There's a lot of, like all these beaches, there's some green space, so beautiful green grassed areas. There's a children's playground, which I'm putting some photos of in the show notes. 
there's barbecue areas, uh, like shady trees, there's lots of seating, you know, lots of people sitting there even outside having fish and chips, looking at the beach, and there's this beautiful breeze coming off the ocean. So it's, it's a nice picnic spot as well, right? Yeah. It's... And, and then right next to that is like a pretty big skate park. It's a really popular skateboard sort of skate park there. And then, then is a massive caravan park. Now, you know, it's starting to happen that a lot of the caravan parks are being moved off the beach, but that's probably one of the biggest cities on the, where you actually, you, the car, you know, opens out onto the beach from the, the caravan park. It's a very, very popular spot with, with families. And as we were driving in, I'll say there's a lot of accommodation here. It really is, it's, ba- it's one of those areas, I think, if you wanted that old fashioned sort of holiday, you know, family beach holiday, you know, where you're just going to be at the beach all day, play in the playgrounds, you know, and get your fish and chips and, and sit on the beach, that, that sort of thing. You know, there's not, there's not a lot of um, shopping. There's, there are some nice shops here, don't get me wrong, there's some pubs and clubs and things and the takeaway shops. But there's, you know, it, it is a nice things to the, the edge of the, the headland, right? yeah. that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. So, you know, you've got spectacular views the whole way and there's lots of little vantage points along the way as well to stop and, and just check out the beautiful the, the surf area. So. Yeah, the coastal road, which is um, up from uh, Jimba right through Sunshine Beach, uh, you can basically see the ocean and... Um, well, Lowe's yeah. Lookout's very popular, which is just back off the beach a bit for a nice vantage point, yeah, they so say. That, that's so it is. Yeah, yeah, look, it is. There it's was a, a magnificent um, beach. Australian pro surfer born here from here, um, Julian Wilson. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, he was only recently... Uh, well, he was born in 1988, so he's in his sort of mid-30s. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's, he's had quite a good good career. But he, he says this is one of his favourite places to surf in the world, probably for obvious reasons. But, you know, they do say it's a pretty good surf break up there near the headland in Well, I think he's also the guy that's involved with the surf art on okay. the Sunshine Coast. Okay. Um, so... Um, now, you can get a direct bus here to Noosa as well. So um, you can hop on a bus if you're staying here and you want to head up to Noosa. So I thought that was... That was pretty cool, you know, because some of the public transport around the Sunshine Coast isn't the best, but you can go directly to Noosa um, from here. I think here. one of the advantages that, that coulomb has got, you've sort of, you've got to say you're sort of in the centre of the Sunshine Coast, like on the beach side of it. So you can go south and you're only 30 minutes probably from where we live, which is Caloundra, and then probably even less than that, 20 minutes north, and you're actually at Noosa Head. One of the popular walks is to climb to the top of Mount Coulomb. Now yes. that, that dominates the landscape. If you're looking back from the beach inland, um, is the we've, is the Mount Coulomb. You know, it's, it's quite a big mountain, and yeah, people go up there all day long. And we've done it once, and I don't ever want to do it again. Well, I've got big... to tell. Can I tell you something you probably don't know? Yes. About Mount Coulomb. Mount Coulomb is the second biggest rock I do know that. in the world after um, Uluru. Only, uh, yeah, after I, Uluru. I so know. there you go. And it's only 208 metres high. Right. But it's an 800 metre trail to get there. And yes, Leanne and I did that when not long after we first met. And uh, But yeah. people do it all the time. So you, you start, there's a car park down the bottom. Correct. So, yeah, and I think you can even, you know, buy coffee and water and stuff. They're like they've got little food, little food truck down the bottom now. It's really popular. What'd you say? Two hundred and eighty meters. Is that right? Two hundred and eight meters high, and with an eight hundred meter trail to get to the top. Right. Okay. Eight hundred. Is that all? Yeah. You see people running up there. I saw a lady yeah, once. Yeah, they do. With um, like a baby strapped onto a front, going like a toddler, um, and I just struggled to get up on my own back when I was a bit bit fitter and 10 kilos lighter so wow that, that would be tough but it, a lot of people there's um they have races and stuff too sometimes so it's, it is a popular reason that people do come to Coolum. yes yeah yeah anything else you want to tell us about Coolum before i go on you no no no, no well another thing that is popular here if we're talking sort of outdoor activities just like give lyle a break so he can have a sip of his cold beer is um there's a place ah. called, <laughs> called the blast aqua park and now this is only open school holidays and and weekends. Oh, there's the Surf Lifesaver putting a um announcement over to the surfers out there. It's um, probably telling them to get out of the water because of sharks. Oh, or stop it! Okay. Why do you do that? 
every so. time. That is not what it is. They're telling them to stay in the flag so that it's safe. Yeah, because the goose. sharks don't go inside the flag. So go on. I was only kidding. Yeah, it's not funny though. Sorry, uh -huh. sorry guys. Um, so can I go back to mine? Sure. Last Aquapark. Um, now they say this is coming off their website. It's the world's largest aqua park on the Sunshine Coast. So when they say aqua park, they're talking about an inflatable obstacle course, and it's basically a hundred meters long by seventy meters of inflatable fun. So you can't go on there if you're under six years unless you're with an adult. And basically, it's slides, blast bags, trampolines, all sorts of different challenges. So it's um it's it is it's a strenuous outdoor activity. So you just have to think if you want to go there, you've got to be able to get slippery and you fall and you've got to climb. So um, it's not for the faint of heart, but you know apparently it's 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 a lot it's a lot of fun. If you don't want to do it and you want your kids to do it, there are lots of shady areas. There's you know free barbecue areas. There is a a cafe and a, a kiosk as well. So um, and then there's a small you know if you've got little toddlers and you think oh you know like what am I going to do with them while oh, my older kids go jumping on that there's a small roped off area in the lake um, for the kids as well so that looks like a lot of fun and then not far away from that Lyle is what they call the Oz Ski Resort which is like a world-class water ski training area but it's on a private man-made freshwater lake so yeah but it's not just for professionals it's for beginners um, up to experience and you can do group booking so say you wanted to you know go somewhere different for a birthday or you know something like that you can your go, son's done that Oscar, totally done it? yeah Oscar resort so but the other thing that looks like fun you know if you're not, not into the water skiing side they, they do, do oh yeah go on, sorry yeah they do um you know Wave tubes board. and um banana boat rides that sort of stuff yeah so so that's at the Oscar resort which is close to the aqua blast park so Lots of fun stuff to be to be had there as well. But do you remember, Lyle? You talked about surf lessons. Do you remember we had a boogie board lesson I do, here? I do. Yeah. I do. I remember. <laughs> that was for, you bought that for me for my birthday. Yeah. So we went. We actually went out here on this and, and um, learnt how the tricks and you know you wouldn't think you needed lessons to boogie board, but you know he gave us a lot of tips and that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And. The other thing back, sort of this, the main couple of streets here are, you know, um, the beach and the shops and the restaurants and stuff. But just, you know, a couple of streets back, you know, away from the accommodation, it's quite a residential place, sure. isn't it? You know, cool. And there's a lot of people love yeah, living here. It's got, well, it's got a population of just over 9,000 people. So it's one of the bigger towns um, on the Sunshine Coast. And it's quite easy to get out onto um, the Sunshine Coast motorway. Yeah. Um, you know, it's fact, fact one of the easiest to do that. And you can hop on the Sunshine Coast motorway, go north or south, obviously, or you can keep going out to the Bruce Highway and, and head, you know, down to Brisbane or up, up further north. So it's pretty well located for that sort of thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. And the other thing, if you, if you don't want to um, spend all day at the beach or at the wave, uh, or, sorry, the water ski um, park, uh, there are some very, very good golf courses uh, in this area. You're st starting from south, you've got um, down south, uh, which is uh, in Majimba, which is the Twin Waters Golf Course. It's probably recognised as the best on the Sunshine Coast. And it's a whole resort. You know, a lot of people, they, they have weddings there and they've got a lake there as well. It's, you know, like it's a, it's a destination, isn't it? Twin, yeah, it's actually waters. beautiful, yeah. And they, they used to do a really, really, really good seafood smogger's board, which I'm sure they probably still do. We've also got, um, then as you drive up towards Coolum, you've got the Mount Coolum Golf Club, which I've played there and, uh, as usual, played very badly. And then we've got uh, the uh, Palmer Coolum Resort Golf Course. Yeah. And then a little bit further, which is not far, we've got the Parisian Golf Course, uh, which is probably another maybe 10 minutes up drive up the road. And in Parisian, uh, they've got a, it's only a small little seaside uh, village, but they've got some really, really good restaurants. Yeah. So there's lots to do around Coolum, yeah? Yeah. And um, I'm glad we've come. We've brought our swimmers. We might have a drink and go and jump in the water, yeah? Sure. Sh scare those sharks away. Yeah, yeah. you betcha. <laughs> so, Lyle, um, if someone wanted to come and stay in Coolum, there's lots of different accommodation, as we said. You know, the apartments on the beach. And as we were driving back through Yandina, you know, I saw some cottages down on the um, the Maroochee River there because that's not far away either. Um, 
but where would you tell them is the best place to enjoy a glass of wine? I reckon just about where we're sitting right here yeah. at the Cool and Surf Club. And uh, if you want to see where that is, go and check out the show notes that, uh, with episode 91 and um, I'll put some really nice photos of uh, where, where we talked about earlier today but also of Cool and Beach and the Cool and Surf Club. I agree. So it's getting a bit rowdy around here. It Lunch is. Lunchtime, isn't it? So we are, it must be time to say um, farewell from me. Yes, and goodbye.